might sound spooky, but remember, fiction, uh, well, truth is stranger than fiction, you see. So, so then what Elijah Muhammad was talking about, well, then, that's, that's all right. right. That's right. That's right. And they laughed at it. Ain't no way in hell you're going to tell me a man with a third grade education is going to talk about the real and going to talk about things that we just not getting to know about. And I'm not a Muslim, but I know that. But I can back it up. I can back it up, and I'm going to show you. I can back it up. If you get the tape, uh, the, the, the human artificials, they got the archaeological evidence right there in Egypt in the temple of said they weren't telling you who the devil is. The archaeological, I'm going to read it tonight. You know, the archaeological e uh, uh, evidence. Because, okay, in, 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 in science you have the you have a theory, which serves as basically what it is until you get to the uh, later or earlier finding, which is the archaeological or anthropological evidence. You have the theory. Well, you have the Deops theory that they mutated in the Ice Age and the whole thing. You know, the, and, and the Charles Finch theory up at the Bull House Medical School. Those are theories. But the archaeological evidence on the Temple of Seti One is the creative man. This is what the Egyptians said. And also, I realized Muhammad said it in his book on Theology of Time, that the Egyptians did it. And, in the, and, and we got a bad witness in the Temple of Seti One. You see, in the Temple of Seti One. So um, we be talking about that type of science, and I've been blessed to, uh, uh, since I've been doing it, I've been um, lecturing about a year now, and as a, as a matter of fact, my stuff is becoming real popular. So I've been blessed with that. Not so much in the finances, but because I did it for a whole year, damn near free. But the whole point is, is, is this stuff is getting out, and I think our people are ready to go to another level. And now we talk about going to a level where you don't have to sleep, you don't have to eat. They got people in India right now don't sleep and don't eat. Yeah, oh, I got to have food, so I got a buck pants for the white man. You don't need no food. Whoever told you that you don't have to sleep? They got brother terriers right in India. Don't sleep with you. Oh, I got to have a man. They got black women in India, in, in India have babies by the sun. That's right. You didn't think that. Have babies by the sun. You don't need a man to have no baby. This, I'm talking about that type of science that the white man knows. You see, know it. And won't, even, and, and won't even argue with you. Why? Because I go out and meet with the white people every day. They don't know who I am. But they, but they know. But they say, oh, you in their cult, then you know these things. There's certain laws of the universe that is supposed to be known. And, and I didn't bring the book, The, the Holy Cabalion. The first book you need to get is, um, I have in my you, got it, you got it in the car. We'll show you that book. And you can get that at Black Media. You can get the laws of Tehuti, the Holy Cabalion. They know this science. They know it. And all, you know. You see, um, the Quebec, the laws of the universe. The next book is called the Hermetic Science and the Rhythm of Num uh, the Rhythm of Motion of Number and Number. That's a, an advanced companion to the Quebec. And another book is called the Sun Umbrella. They know this science. You see, and that's the point. I mean, it's one thing to get the African knowledge to wake us out of the dough, out of the dirt, and then we go to the door. But it's another thing to step through the door, and that's the type of science we talk about. Unbelievable thing. Just about anything you can think of in the universe that you see on them, in them comic books, you can do it. And that's what the right boy ain't letting you know. Especially us, because we are God. You see. And we'll get into the science of that too. Not the creator, but God. You see. So that's the stuff that he's not letting us know. You see. Science fiction is science fact. That's why you think I'm lying. That's why they at Oxford Bookstore, they added two comic book stores, one at the bottom of the one on, um, in um, Peach Street Babylon, and one, a whole other section of the one in Far Road, and white people there, and they're doing it. You see, that's how they train these white people. They call them the cyberpunks. They start them off on video games and comic books, get their mind on an advanced level for science, and then they go into, later on, they go into computers, and then they go into this esoteric knowledge. They can grab it, and they can be with it. Some they great. They know this stuff. In high school, they know it. We stick sitting around here talking about both. A punk nigga, Jesse Jackson, book dancing for the Jews. Talk about both. Both. Common sense gonna tell you, go up and see the, the, the all the, not even just the mayor's race, but the city council and all, you're gonna see mostly blacks. Don't you know when the white man abandons something that it doesn't work, he give it to the black people if we think we got something? It's just like some of them restaurants and stuff. All the white people go when it's fresh, and then when they get ragged and all, all the black people start hanging out. It's the same thing with politics. It don't work. It's a joke. It's a joke book. You see what I'm saying? The president is not even the president got his votes. You see, common sense will tell you that. If, we, if it's a two-party system, we got Democrat and we got Republicans. 
Why in the devil is Bill Clinton having the same policies and military policies as Bush did? It's supposed to be a different person. Oh, you voted for somebody else that's supposed to be different than Bush. But didn't Bush go into Kuwait and, and Iraq and um, Somalia? Didn't uh, 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 Bill Clinton do the same thing? It's all the name of the game. He got a boss just like you. He got just as much power as you do. Why well, vote for a man that's working for somebody else? You see, and that's the whole name of this whole game. So, I mean, the, the science is up there, unbelievable. But the science of the black man is unbelievable, more than you can even think of. And the funny part about it is, is he got to take us off the planet. Come two to three years, he got to take us off the planet. And don't, 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 don't budge out thinking that everything's going to be all right, because the crack of on it, and you stupid. And that's just the way it is. We got to tell the people what time it is, you see. The King Alpha plan that we talk about, man, I'll just say this for the long lecture, but we can go ahead and all. The first thing we need to do is we need to start the lecture, because we got enough crowd now. So the first thing I need to do is I need to pour some, uh, we, we ask the oldest person in the room for permission to speak. Now, who is that going to be? Okay. Yeah, I have permission to speak. Okay. Now, the next thing we do is we pour libations, because... It's a lot of information, and in order to get this stuff going, we need a, a, a smooth current. I just need a little cup or something. It'll make a difference. A smooth current and a smooth spirituality to really get the, 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 the spirit moving up in here. So we pay for libations and all. So the first thing we do, you don't have no plan or nothing in here. Do they don't make a difference. We just do it like this. They don't make a difference. Um, the first thing we're going to do is, um, the four libations is we, we, we invite the ancestors. Now, um, one thing about inviting the ancestors that people don't know is the ancestors is your lawyer pleading your case to the hierarchies in heaven. You see? And now there's a chain of your people going on that pleads your case. And I know him. He's mine. So he pleads your, he or she pleads your case. You see? This is the importance of ancestor. What ancestor worship? You understand that, that we get it all in the in, in the uh, the biblical things and all the other propaganda, this devil worship. And I know such thing as devil worship. And uh, if you want to go that way, I can show you right in the Bible where, they, where, where it's supposed to be devil worship if you want to get funky with it. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> but ancestor worship is a spiritual process to invite them and show them that we love them and let them guide us through everything and plead our case and help them. Wish there is a help. We're going to get in all of it. Man, that's a beautiful. Now, uh, the first thing we do is uh, I call out, well, I'm going to call out some gods. Get a little more water, but I'm going to get some. Okay, okay, cool. I'm going to call out some gods, and then, you know, and we'll go, you go, when I call them out, you go, I'll shake. And then we'll call out some ancestors, and I want you to name some of your ancestors also, too. So we'll call out some gods. Osa, Ashe. Heru, Ashe. Aset, Ashe. Jeshua Ben Pandera, which means Jesus. Ashe. Uh, Tahuti. Ashe. Uh, Krishna, black, blue, black, God, Krishna. Ashe. Um, Oshun. Ashe. Ogum. Ashe. Alekba. Ashe. Arya. Ashe. Goddess Segment. Ashe. The Goddess Kali from India. Ashe. Uh, Hathar. Ashe. Um, Nomo. Ashe. Apit, the great mother Apit. And Apit and Nuke together, Ashe. We're going to get into all that, what it means. That's the, so we invited that. Now let's invite some ancestors right quick. We ain't need to mop after a while, but I think we ain't going to touch this spiritual water here today. Uh, I'll go with my grandmother, Irene Shaw. Ashe. Elijah Muhammad. Ashe. Very good. Ashe. 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 Ah, shit. Ah, shit. Ah, shit. We'll do it that way. Now, since we've opened the floor for the, for the ancestor to come and guide over us and, the, and the, the bring the spirituality into the abode and all, um, well, I'm going to up just a little bit of water and all, whether you need a little rag or whatever, we should go ahead and start this lecture. And I guess the first place we do is um, when we start this lecture, well, I don't know, um, solid. Well, don't worry about it. We'll start the lecture. I'll pass out some. Um, I'll pass out some some uh, flyers to let you know exactly what I'm talking about. Right now, I don't have my um, my overhead projector, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to show you something. Uh, I'm try to show you something. Um, 
The first place that we need to stand, that's enough. Don't wipe it all up yet. Yeah, oh, just go ahead. Yeah, just wipe all this. Just pour it like that. Okay. Now, first place we need to do is start from the beginning. And uh, I used to be a comedian in college, so excuse me. <laughs> yes. But I figure, you know, we talking some serious stuff. We got to get a little bit of fun out of it. First thing we need to do is start all the way from the beginning. And to start from the beginning, we need to start in a place in Egypt or a place in Kemet called the uh, Dendera. And in Dendera we have, we'll just, I'll tell you what, we just pass some of these things around. And then when we get through, we'll give you some, because there'll be some Xerox copies after that. And uh, congratulations, you just, you, you in time, because we just started. So we're going to pass this round so you can go this way and pass this round. We're going to start from the beginning at the Temple of Dendera. Now the Temple of Dendera is in Kemet, uh, Egypt, and is known by the Temple of Is uh, uh, Hathor, who is a form of Isis, a uh, form of Aset. And at the Temple of um, Hathor, at the Temple of Dendera, the Temple of Hathor at Dendera, what we have is this. We had the priests in Kemet, when the Greeks invaded, they said, well, don't come, we won't be around much longer. Oh, give or take a thousand years or whatever. But we're going to need something that's planted so the brothers and sisters can catch it on the other side of the Atlantic. You see, this day and time. Now, in Kemet, the priest can prophesy thousands of years in advance. That's why some of your works, your Jehudian literature, and some of your, your biblical literature that comes out of the Gnostic schools in Alexandria, Egypt, is 100% pathetic prophecy, prophecy. Pro prophetic prophecy than it is literal history, you see. And we need to take the biblical stuff sometimes as principles more than literal history. Because we know that when it comes to the Exodus story. Said that the, the, the Jews built the pyramids. Well, doggone the pyramids, the last pyramid was built a hundred years before Muhammad's birth. Not Muhammad's birth, but Abraham's birth. He's supposed to be the father. And we know that the, the so-called Pharaoh of that time, that's supposed to be the evil Pharaoh, was in, was supposed to have been dr had drowned in the Red Sea. Now, how could he be drowned in the Red Sea when he got a big old tomb built for him and he lived 96 years, had 60-something children and lived 96 years, and not only lived 96 years, they got his body preserved to this day. So we understand the whole point is to show you a spiritual principle that illustrates a spiritual manifested thought than a real history, you see. And also, too, religions that come out of the other religion, they have to somehow level the other religion to get that group of people to believe in that religion. People say, well, if this religion is spiritual, I already got one of them, so I don't necessarily need this one. So it was a little bit of psychology that went on. Now, going back to this particular temple of gender, in the temple of Dendera, you have the zodiac of Dendera, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just find a book. I'll find a book that has the zodiac of Dendera in it, and we'll uh, uh, pass this around right quick. This is the picture, this first one here. And in that zodiac of Dendera, you have what you call the planar sphere. It's a round zodiac that was up in the top of Dendera that was blown down by the Greeks and taken to the Louvre in Paris. Well, this particular Zodiac. And that particular temple was built in the Ptolemy period, which was late in Egyptian history, but what had happened was they used to tear down temples and build other temples from the bricks. But there was a papyrus that was in the wall of that temple. And that papyrus gave them the inscriptions to put on the wall of the new temple. And that papyrus, or that plan, was 90 thousand years old, you see. And that's late in our history, what they don't tell us. It's 90,000 years old. So now we have one of the oldest existing pieces of time in history, older than, older than Egyptian history. Now, in that particular zodiac, you have all of the gods that represent all of the stars and all of the heavens. It represents all of the gods that you know in some way, fashion, and form. And in the middle of that temple, you have one particular god. You have one particular god that all of the gods come from. And I'll show you this. That particular god that all of the gods come from is this particular hippopotamus goddess. 
This hippopotamus god is called Athet Atire Earth. Ty meaning land and earth meaning earth, or meaning mother, mother earth, tire earth, or aphid, or later representation as Newt. Remember those words because it's directed right to you because you are the children of Newt and the children of aphid. Now, and if you have it by God itself, you've got to be God. Now, this particular hippopotamus goddess represents a pregnant woman. It's pregnant because it has a big stomach. And also a hippopotamus come in and out of the water. So that's known as the primordial waters of noon. Now, she's having, and I'll get the picture for you. She's having a son. In that particular calendar, she's giving birth to a son. Now this particular son is known as a dog or a jackal. A dog or a jackal. So it would look like this. This is a jackal. A jackal just means dog in Egypt. A particular type of dog. And all. Now she's having a son. Now this particular son that she's having, this dog and this jackal, this is real key, will later on be the prototype of the gods that you know. I don't care what god it is. It will be the same prototype, whether you believe in Allah, whether you believe in Jesus, whether you believe in Buddha, whether you believe in Krishna, whether you believe in Osa or Heru. It's the same god form. That particular God that she's having is the God that you say God in heaven. Now, it's a, it's a dog. Why a dog? Well, number one, a dog. Remember now, first of all, the Egyptians housed everything in animals because people change. People's attitudes change. And also, as we can see, the people's colors change too. But animals stay the same. Nature stays the same if it doesn't become extinct. But it still stays the same. The same. Because even if it, one animal comes extinct, it still has another animal in the animal family that's just like it. So they would house the principles in nature. Now why a dog? They say, why is dog God spelled backwards? And when danger comes, it barks and warns you. When certain weather changes come, it barks and warns you. Certain cycles come, it does certain things in nature and, and warns you. So the dog was the prototype of the god. Now that is the mythological point of that particular god. The astronomical point of that particular god is the star system Sirius, which is in the star system of Canis Major. Isis is known from coming from the star system of Sirius, bringing wheat to the world. Now, this is how this goes. It's from the star system Sirius, and it's called the dog star. It's a whole star system cluster. Isis is known as the soul of Sirius, or the Egyptian word would be S-E-P-T, Sept. That's the Greek, well, that's the, the, the American word, or, or the English word Sirius, and the Greek word is Sotis. But the S-E-P-T, Sept, which means the soul of Isis, or the soul of Aset. Heru is connected, who is Horus, is connected with Sirius. Osa is connected with Sirius. So now, what we have here is this particular dog is called the Dog Star. And that's the astronomical counterpart. Gets a little deeper than that. Let's go on to um, a certain area, a certain stage that we want to talk about dealing with us. And number one, let me go into a little more religion. In the Babylonian text or the Sumerian text, that Sirius is known, well, in the Egyptian text, let's go to Egypt. In Egyptian, it's known as the, the what you would say, the human counterpart is known as the first god in historical proportion that we know of. No other god exists other than Aphid, who is the mother of this god, but the actual god is called F-U-T, Soot, which means black. There's no other god that exists that predates this. Try to trace it back because this is 90,000 years old. And this is the oldest representation because before then, black men and black women were the prototypes of God and they did not need history. It was all in the mind. We understand that now if you go to the griots because you go there and you ask them to start with the history 
And if you, if you start a few hundred years, they get insulted, they say, because they got to go back further than that before they even start talking. So they used to record the history in mind. But when we're talking about the first recordings, the first recordings of history was Sut, S-U-T, which means the blue black god, which is the son of the goddess Apet, which means earth, which means earth, which is the, the microcosmic part, but the celestial part, it means the triple blackness of space. Triple blackness of space. And it's called Newt. It's another name for, for this particular god. Pay up real co um, close attention to this triple blackness of space and this particular, um, you can start those out and start passing them out. And all, you can go go and start them out and start passing them out and stuff. Uh, and all, we, it's the triple blackness of space. Now, Sut rev later on becomes Set, which is the Egyptian devil of the, uh, of the adversary of Osiris. He later becomes a mutated form. You get the heretic papyrus of the British Museum, translated by Ch Chester Beatty, translated by Alan H. Gar um, Alan H. Gardner, Chester, Br Chester Beatty. Set, it later becomes a mutated form of a person and known as the prototypical devil prototype of the devil. He later on becomes the word Shaitan in Samaria. He later on becomes Satan in Hebrew. But before it fell, it was called Sut, the blue black god, the first god in history where Ra Pat fashions himself after, where Ptah fashions himself after, where Osiris fashions himself after. See, after it fell, the other gods came and fashioned themselves. Now, what does this mean? Let's go, well, what does this mean about all these doggone gods? I thought we believed in the God one or the one God. So the Christians say. You get E. Wallace's book, Budge's book, from Fetish the God in Ancient Egypt, 1935. He said, I wrote Gods of the Egyptian, two volume sets, 15 years before. And I thought it was a, uh, what you would call a, a, a religion that was a... Uh, I thought it was a, a, a polytheistic religion, but I was wrong the whole time. What I didn't understand was the religions, when I would see these particular gods, which was called netters, it just meant the certain attributes of the one God, or the God one. Because God is many, but this is like the African would explain the attributes of the God. Later on, man become, became kind of dumb and ignorant, so they had to just say, God, we won't deal with all of that because you will not understand the concept. But the Africans were advanced enough to understand the concepts of all of those deities to mean one when you put them together like a piece of puzzle. So there was no such thing as a polytheistic. They always uh, uh, worshipped the God one or the one God. Now, Sut later on becomes El Shadah or El Shadi, which means God Almighty in Kip, in Samaria. God Almighty or El Shadi later on becomes Jehovah in Jehovah in the Hebrews culture. Same soot, same series. So we locate in heaven because guess who is on those planets is the real deal what we're talking about here. You see, becomes Jehovah. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, to, to give you the the religions from an astronomical counterpart, so it won't be no argument when you argue whether you be Muslim, Hebrew, Jew, or whatever, Christian, we're saying that all the gods are the God one or the, or the one God, the same God. We're just arguing over different cultural differences. Now, what about Islam? If Sirius is known as Jehovah, which is Hebrew, right? Let's go and see what Allah is. Let's go and see what our lot is. If we've already... Now, we all understand that Sirius is also the chief god of Egypt, or the, or the chief god of Kemet, because Isis is known as the soul of Sirius. You have the god Anubis is known as the, as, as the, the dog star, or is known as the, the, the opener of the way of Sirius. You also have the god Tahuti, which is your, your Hermes Thrasmagistus material comes from, which is the, the papyrus rose or the knowledge, which would come, would be, I think it would be, um, I think it would be the revelations of John Divine in the Bible. Tahuti is also by way of Sirius. 
Well, the whole thing is, if, if, let's link this thing. Now, we understand that the God of the Buddhas is serious. Krishna being a blue-black God in India, which in India you have the Hari Krishna, Hari, Hari, Hari Krishna. The word Hari means serious. Krishna means Christ, or the blue-black God Christ. All connected. Now, in the Quran, it's one of the one of the best preserved pieces in a religious document other than the Book of the Dead or the Book of Coming Forth by Day. One of the best preserved pieces is preserved in the Quran, and it goes like this. And it's talking about um it's talking about the actual making of the male and the female. And this is what it says. Number one, it says, uh, that each man shall be judged on his own labor, and his labor shall be scrutinized, and that shall be judged required for them. For them. And all things shall return to God. This is the God that moves the weeping and the laughter and ordains life and death. This is the God that created both sexes, male and female, from one single drop of ejaculated semen, and will create all things anew. He who bestows and he enriches, he is the Lord of Sirius. Right in the Quran, and it's the back footnote, the dog star. So we have... Where is that again? This is, this is in the Quran under the chapter of the star. First it starts off with the, with the blue black angel Gabriel coming to give the Quran to Muhammad. And, it, and then it starts talking about where he comes from and the, what particular God. Beautiful work, right in the Quran. Because Muhammad... Used to because Muhammad's father used to worship Sirius because he was connected with the Kushite Arabs, which was nothing but the ancient Egyptian mystery system in Arabia when Arabia was all black. Muhammad got rid of all the other astronomical counterparts, but he kept the chief star and put it in the Quran for those savage Arabs who could not understand the science. They just had one star in sight, and that particular star is Sirius. He did do that, and he forbid them from worshiping or, or, or even studying the other stuff because he understood that he didn't want to get them off of track because man had gone savage then. So now it's in there under the star, which the star means the heaven or the astronomical counterpart. There's a part in here about the cow also because the cow is known as the cow or the celestial cow of heaven. And in that zodiac of Dender that I talk about, they got a picture of a star of a cow with a star between the horns, and that means serious. So I wanted to put that out. I wanted to put that out um, to show you exactly what that, uh, what's going on with that. Number one, this is a picture of the. Did I give him? Did, did I pass this out? Number one, the Hebrew. You have the Hebrew Kabbalah. Did the Hebrew square back? We know that this Kabbalah, this holy Kabbalah, came from Egypt. Which the Kabbalistic writings is the writings that they put the Bible together because you can take the Bible step by step and find different parts of the spiritual centers of your body. The chakras, the pineal gland, the kundalini, and the whole nine yards. So your Bible is nothing but a blueprint document of something of an esoteric knowledge of the rising to God. Check. Now, this is the, the, the Kabbalah. Also, we find the origins of that Hebrew Kabbalah on the temple of Komo Ombo in Egypt or Kenneth. Right here, we got the documented history and the evidence that the Kabbalah came out of Kemet. Even though we understand, most people understood that you have Ra Nefer, Amen Ra, that gives you the, the actual deities of the Kabbalah, and the most white secret societies deal with the Egyptian Kabbalah. Now, what is this Kabbalah? Let me explain some things here. What's going on? The Kabbalah, you have, because we need to we need to break this, and we need to bring it into religion so you can get. The reason why they're not telling you about this whole UFO thing is because it's related to us. You have a breakdown of the universe and also a breakdown of the body. All this also represents the spiritual centers of the body because we're nothing but the microcosm of the macrocosm. If I got a big bucket of water that represents God and I take a cup and dip it in that big bucket of water, is not the contents in the cup the same as the contents in the bucket of water? It's the same. Well, that's all you are, the microcosm of the macrocosm. So when Allah Muhammad said that the black man was God, we laughed at that. 
We're not talking about the creator, but we're talking about God, generator, operator, and destroyer. Esoteric terms. Now, you have a breakdown of the body, then you have a breakdown of the universe. Right here, you have number 10 is the earth, which is called the daughter, the material world, because this is the material world. Next, you would have Venus, Mercury, you would have the moon right here, you'd have the sun right here, you'd have Jupiter, you'd have Mars, you'd have Saturn, and you'd have Saturn as a gateway to another dimension, and you'd have the zodiac, which is explaining some part of the universe, and then you would have Keva. Keva means crown, and it is the sun behind the sun. Our sun is probably 20 times greater than the earth, or more which falls in insignificance to its father, the sun behind the sun, which is about 20 or 30 times greater than the sun. The sun re reflects the light of this particular sun. The sun is Sirius, Kepha, which means the, the, the first light reflected in space from the great mother space, the celestial womb, the triple darkness of space that reflects light. That first light greater a first in heaven than the other stars is Sirius, our son's father. And it is the father to, it is the true father of this particular universe, even though they might be parallel universes, or there are parallel universes. The true father of this particular universe is called the central sun, which is the sun of all the other solar systems, is Sirius. Real key. Because Ahmed Elijah Muhammad said there's other life forms in the universe. But the black man being the most superior. We got the documented evidence of every god that you know that came down here in the ancient time was black. And they came from this particular region. Now you have this top triad. Not these, these three spheres is known as the archetypal world. Right in here you see a crossbar that says the star. So they're talking about all of these as a representation of Sirius. And it, and it says the star and all. And it has um, um, Bino, which is the mother, which means creative world, which means understanding. You have Shakma, which is the father, archetype, which means wisdom. And you have crown, which means light. What they don't show on this particular one is there's another realm or another ring that's over that. It's called Ansor, Ansor, Ansor. It means the blackness, or it means nothing. Nothing you have the absolute from nothing. From the nothing you get the absolute. This is the Tahuti science. The triple blackness of space. Because now, this is the key behind this. Keva is reflected into Malkar. The microcosm, the macrocosm. This is where you come into being. As above, so below is the Tahuti's principles, or the principles, or ancient Kamite principles of the universe. As above, so below. As within, so without. As up under, so on top. That's the law of correspondence. You need to get the book, the Holy Caballion, to give you these laws. You can get up the black media communication. Now, to go on, when the Greeks invaded Kim, they said, well, look, they, they got the high priest Manetho. They said, well, um, we want you to tell us the history of Kim, or the history of Egypt. He said, well, we got 500 pharaohs in the dynastic period. That's 3,000 years. We have, um, we have 800 pharaohs in the pre-dynastic. That's about uh, 5,000 years. So we're talking about roughly 8,000 to 10,000 years. They said, well, who used to rule before then? He said, oh, that's when a whole bunch of guards used to rule. That's when a whole bunch of guards used to rule. What do you mean by that? He meant at one time on the planet when it was nothing but black people. You don't hang you need to argue about that. One time on the planet, black people had all of their spiritual centers in motion. They had the, this is the Holy Kabbalah, and you can get this also. You can get it at Black Media Communication. They had all of the spiritual centers hooked up. You had the, the, the seven chakras, which is represented as the seven seals in your body. You had the, the crown chakra, which is known as the the Christ mind, that you had one brother that had the Christ mind by going to the schools in Egypt and went, went in and told him that he was God, just like he, all black people were gods. He just told him he was, and the people said, oh yeah, you're the son of God. Yeah, he was the son of God. He didn't lie. But what you didn't know is, 
you can become that same person. You see, by raising the spiritual center. At one time on the planet, we all was that way. We all was going to the level, we was all working on the level of God. What happened was, we got trapped in this third dimension. Our origin was the star system series. Real key, because this is, this, is, this is a saving grace for us getting ready to go on with this white boy. He's under attack, and he's getting ready to get his behind him. Whipped up by the gods of the universe, it's going to put him in hell. So we came from the star system of Sirius. We could have a debate on this. Anybody want to debate it? Because we know where the Egyptian, the, 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 uh, the Christian, Christian religion came from. I showed you what the dog on Quran said. So now, the, we were first seated from the star system Sirius. All we had to do was to keep up with time and to know when the brother got on the planet up to the part where the brother was. But somehow, we lost track of time, and time, by losing track of time in a third dimensional density, this is the third dimension, we have different dimensions. If you go on the fourth dimension, you will disappear. That's the spirit world. And if you go on the third dimension, you will see everybody that died, and they haven't gone on to another level. The way things are going right now, they're stuck somewhere on the lower levels and stuff, right? Now, they forgot time, and time caught up with them, and when time caught up with them, they were known as a fallen people. When Egypt came into being, the black man had already lived for millions of years, but he was on his downfall. The reason why Kemet existed was to record the records to teach man how to elevate himself to the level of God. Check. That's where you have your mystery schools. And to record this, and if they didn't do it, we would have even more trouble from this beast because he wouldn't have learned no kind of education at all. But he did learn stuff that was stolen from the mystery schools by the Greeks, and then later on, after they went into a dark age, later on given back to them by the Moors in Spain. But they lost track of time, and time caught up with them. That's all happened. Time caught up with us. But people don't understand that the chronology is off. We think that things start, well, number one, we deal with a thick 6,000 year history from the Bible. We get the Bible and think that the, the history starts with the Bible. Never take your history from the biblical concept because 6,000 years, 6,000 years it was over for us. The Sphinx that sits in the middle of the world is carbon dated at 17,000 years old because the last time it has a heavy rainfall content and the last time it rained in that particular area was 17,000 years, was 9,000 years ago. Then they carbon dated it again and said it was 17,000 years. So that means that the chronology has got to be off. You see what I'm saying? Manepto told you more than 6,000 year history when he gave the history of Kemet. And that's the latest part. The estimate is we don't know how long we've been on the planet. So in actuality, we said, well, time caught up with us. We went, that's sad. We don't understand. We ruled for millions of years. And in actuality, all we did is just took a two, three thousand year snooze. It's like an intermission period. You see what I'm saying? Which we're about to get back on top of this in your lifetime. You see what I'm saying? Provided you don't fall stupid to the beast and die up in here. But even if you do, you can't lose. Because you don't die, you're going to be transformed to another region. If you are headed, they're going to have to take you out of this physical body. If you're smart, you can walk into the hereafter in the physical body. Going on. So you had this particular elder race. They call them the elves, the elder race. You had what you know as the El Sada, the Elohim. You see, the Elohim, the El Sada, uh, 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 Allah would be the name, which would be a higher counterpart, because Allah means field of current. And it also means melanin. We're going to get into the science today to show you exactly what we did with this, you know, how we can whip this, this thing just with our minds. Then you have the great land of Atlantis, which supposedly sank below the ocean, which did exist. White people don't argue that at all. You get the most white, the, the, one of the greatest white scholars. They don't tell you that, but they don't argue that at all. It did exist, but, it, but, but it's our history. It was black people. If we lived for millions of years and we was on the planet before Egypt, then obviously we had to be in a point. And supposedly sank, well, part of it did, part of it sank into the third dimension of a load of the third dimension. And part of it is left in the fourth dimension. What happened with us is we got cut off from the gods. What happened was one people. 
Then we forgot time, and we got cut off from a group of gods, the same people that we were. So when you got when, when you got in Kemet, when they were actually some of us in the gods, they were actually talking about actual ancestors that live. They just live on another dimension. So when they would take you into the temples and start operating, you would call it rituals. You would actually have entities that would come down and heal you by operating on you in a spiritual sense. Operating on the, on, on, on the spiritual body. Because this is not the real you, this is the physical you, which is the illusionary you. Because once you open the pineal gland, the illusionary world disappears. And the real world begins. That is the spirit world. The real you is inside, which is called Amen, the hidden God. The real you, the spiritual you. So, all of those gods that you would see on the temples was actually real entities in other dimensions. But the same gods as you are. You see. Now, so time caught up with them. They went through the whole Atlantis period, Lemuria, which was earlier than Atlantis, and the whole nine yards. And um, the point was, we estimate that about 90,000 years. Now this is the key because what we are in right now is precious time. It's the best of times and it's the worst of times. It's the worst of times because you're seeing black people falling apart. But remember, after all of our stuff for millions of years, we just now falling apart. After all we went through in slavery, we started falling apart, what, an estimate, about six years ago. Uh, when you found out there was a thing that's cracked when Lenny Bias died. Because at first they smoke screened the AIDS uh, thing into the homosexual thing to fool you. You said it was a faggot disease and then not all, now you're the number one carrier of AIDS. But you started falling apart with the crack thing when Lenny Bias died in 1986. And when, when most of the America found out about crack. But you didn't fall apart even through all of the slavery and all. You're just not falling apart. But it's time for that. That's the beautiful part. All the crazy stuff you see that you're getting all along about, it's time for that. This is the cleansing period before the real deal gets ready to start. Now, what time is it? It says, bear in mind, this is a book called A Cosmic Doctrine by Dion Fortune. It says, by bear in mind, however, the sign of Gemini, the forces signified by the sign of the ages, the stars set configurations somewhat similar to those of the days of Atlantis. The major planetary focus, the, the five signs, including the making, marking again, the contributions differ from that of something some kind of inner condition. But what it's saying is, the actual current, the actual cosmic energy, the last time that it was on the planet was 90,000 years ago. So, so, the same as that particular temple of zodiac identity that I showed you, when the man was God. That is what time it is at this particular time. It's called a quickening. So what's happening in the quickening is this. Some of you are challenging everything that you know of. It don't seem right. That's called a quickening. You're having spiritual awakenings. You notice something's wrong. Something is driving you to come to Afrocentric lectures and try to find out more of yourself. You see what I'm saying? And you also get to the point right now that money don't make a difference. You just, you just got to have the money so you can just pay a little bit of bills because you're in slavery because capitalism is slavery. But other than that, it don't really make a difference that you, you get your manhood or your womanhood based on how big your body is. There's something that's different. You can't stand the way your brothers and sisters are, 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 are struggling. That's called a quickening. Something is happening in you. But the quickening works two ways. If you are thinking, you think this way. If you are stupid and non-thought, you think this way. So what happens is, is you get more than non-thought. So a brother can kill a brother over a piece of chicken. You see what I'm saying? You see, a uh, uh, hot dog. One people, the two brothers fighting over a dog on hot dog. One brother pull out a gun back in March and shoot at the other brother. Other brothers jump out the window, the bullet ricochet and kill them all. That kind of crazy sense of stuff. So this stuff that's going on is a spiritual quickening that's all around us because there's a cosmic substance in the air to bring us back to God and to take the beast off the planet. He knows it. Now, so these forces are among us to let you know what time it is. Okay. Another thing. Let's get some, some, time, some precise time doors. Okay, uh, some precise time doors to let you know what time if we need to be doing our thing, you see, uh, we need to be doing our thing and getting um, right. And that time was last week or uh, last year. We way behind schedule. Okay, the time, April 1994, when Sophist 
which is Isis, and Horus, which is Sabdu, celebrate their 50 year heroes' gambles, or uh, holy reunion. Such close time in between the solar systems, the Sun, the Earth, the Pluto, and Neptune, Sirius, or uh, Sophic star system, occurs but once every 90,000 years, giving some inkling a stunning rarity uh, opportunity, evolutionary opportunity to humanity in the last two decades of the 20th century. Check. Now, to let you know what time it is, and let you know what time this beast is going to start making his move. He's already made his move in the 80s with the crack, and he's making his move now. And that's the reason why you got the Atlanta Project going on, to give you the immunization and all that. You've already given your children the shot. Don't really worry about it. Keep on the diet and it won't do anything. But see, the immunization go with all the chicken and all the other cool jive. And all of the hog and all the other stuff that black people in. They understand there's going to be a few people that they can't catch, so they know they're going to get the mass of us because we ain't getting off no hog, no chicken, <laughs> no beef, no hamburgers, and no other stuff like that. No, we're going to have that. So, um, this is why they got to make a move on us. Let's go into some things that's going on in the cosmos. Number one, also, you had some blue men from Sirius that were seen all over the world. If you get some Krishna, some, some India pictures, you'll see gods in blue. They have them in light blue now, but they were actually signifying a blue-black man that was all over. The blue-black the blue -black Krishna, the blue-black Buddha, the blue-black Osiris, or Osa, the blue-black Isis and child, Heru, the blue-black Jesus, which is nothing but a, 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 a later representation of Heru. You got the historical Jesus and the mythical Christ. Historical, um, mythical Christ is Horus, which means a title. You can become to the level of Christhood. The historical Jesus is Jeshua ben Pandera, who studied in, in Egypt, in the Gnostic schools, the Essenes or whatever, in Kemet. Jeshua means uh, 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 son. No, no. Jeshua means Jesus. Ben means son. And Pandera was the panther skins that they wore in that particular priesthood in Kemet. You can get the Jeremiah's book, Historical Jesus, Mythical Christ. Also at Black Media or whatever, and we're going to get the sister here to start getting some books up in there too sometime soon and also she can start um, supplying the knowledge to the, to the brothers and sisters. So, you had the blue men that was all over the place. Now, number one, what we're going through here is a grand illusion. Because I don't give a dog when we stay up night, we cannot figure out a way to get out of this stuff. You know, we tried it up. Even with the afro century, all the afro century brothers, we done did all this stuff, done put on all the African clothes, and still yet. The white man on our ass the next morning. And to this day, we had, we had the ASCAC convention that started in 1985. The first one, 84 or 85 and all. Even had Diop to come and die at the same dog on here. But we still, white man still running things, and things are getting worse. Because what we are in is a grand illusion. And it, guess what? We've already, this, this thing has already been fought and won millions of years ago. What happened was this. Supposedly there was a war in heaven. Now I'm going to light up on those, uh, the Orion brothers because they're doing a good deal. There was a war in heaven. You had the constellation of Orion. And, and I got this from Brother Delbert Blair in Chicago. I said, where would you get this information from? And he said he, somebody gave him a book called The Origin, The Black Man's Origin from Space in the Early 70s. And he read it. Gave the book back to the brother, but he remembered the story, and now he can't find the brother, the book, or he went to the Library of Congress and can't find the ESPN number. You see. But luckily, I went on the research path and found an out-of-print book, and it's out-of-print too. All the good stuff come out of print. Called The Rebirth of Pan by Jim Brandon. Rebirth of? Rebirth of Pan. Pan meaning serious. The goat god Pan, which is also connected with Sagittarius, and I'm a Sagittarius. And also, this is a divine um, hookup all together, which means serious or set. <laughs> the Rebirth of Pan in this particular book um, is out of print, too, which, which talks about that war in heaven. And it goes like this. There was a war in heaven between the constellation of, Or of Orion and the constellation of the, uh, the dog star. What happened was these Orions did not want to work. Had a planet named Tarantar or something like that, and they built this big computer. And... Uh, because they're advanced. Now, we're talking about advanced people. We're the ones that's not advanced. We were advanced, but we're not now. And they built this big computer, and this computer was so big, it started running planets and started running other solar systems. So they got into a war with the advanced people of the universe. The advanced people being the Syrians, which is us. And they got their behinds ripped. It took about 10 years to get their behinds ripped. Anyway, they got a dying planet, supposedly. And 
They came down to earth in 1954 and supposedly gave, went, um, met with Eisenhower, if you read that in the, uh, who said about the, uh, Pearl Harbor, met with Eisenhower and all of this here, and, and um, they told him, well, look, they said, well, we need, we need land, and we'll give you technology that we don't have, that you, it'll take you, next, take you the next 1,000 years to get. They said, cool, we'll give you land, and say, we, we need a little bit of people to experiment on, so they gave them people, you know, mainly white people. And all right, so the old Orion's ain't that bad either way because they ain't messing with us. You see, but they messing. So they have decided they're gonna take over this planet. And the Interplanetary Brotherhood, which is the head is serious, which the Interplanetary Brotherhood have highly functional pineal glands. Real key because we have highly functional pineal glands. And all. So the Interplanetary Brotherhood would have came in and interceded if these people would have took over the planet. But the white boys signed the three treaty with them, so they said, well, since since this is a cosmic law. And, and the word is the bond, and you reap what you sow, it's so perfect. You got to actually go ahead and play this thing out because you signed the agreement with them. If they would have came in without you signing that, or, you know, just messing with we would have done something along because we're looking out for the brothers on the planet, not you, the mutant. So they signed this, this, this treaty, and um, so they say you got to play it out. So these people supposedly have taken over half the stuff, but they're messing with white people, so I don't really, really, I'm not really talking against them. But the point about it is, the government, they're thinking, I'm going to let you know that, that the powers on Earth is greater than any of these beast powers that you're thinking of. The government figure they're going to get bad. They're going to take their baddest fighting force, the Green Berets and the Navy Seals, they're going to go in because these Orions are taking over a whole town in um, in Texas. A whole town, probably, you know, Texas, probably a town full of white people. Taking it over. Um, they're going to go and move in to try to kill them. But see, this, they're so advanced, they probably knew they was going to move in about two weeks before they moved in. And when they moved in, they was the, the, the Green Beret and the doggone Navy Seals were dead in six minutes. Now, that's some powerful energy. And that's 80,000 years more advanced than Earth. But guess what? The stuff, the technology that they got is old. Our stuff is about 80,000 years more advanced than theirs. And they're, they're the old rhyme. But anyway, they have given the Earth... The top secret military program is what's going on when I said that they took the money from the savings and loan and transferred it over to the uh, to the space program. They, and the top military, you could go to, uh, I think it's called Red Hunt Arsenal or something in Huntsville, Alabama, and they got these UFO testing sites going up and also in um, Area 50-something in um, Arizona. They got Area 57 or something like that in Arizona where they got this stuff. They got this particular... Technology from the Orions that gave them this particular technology, but it's old technology, and it's nothing compared to our technology. Now, this particular war that went on in hell went on about a couple of million years ago. In the universe, you have a mental process, but you have a mental universe where you have thought forms. So watch your thoughts because thoughts are things. It went on a couple of thousand years ago, and what happened was, in this particular, uh, these thought forms travel through the universe until they go to what you call a third dimensional density, which is a physical density. And then they replay over like a, a, a VCR. So in actuality, what we got is an instant replay of a greater war that went on in heaven a couple of million years ago, which we know we've already won. So it's going to make a difference. We've already, we already won this war. There's nothing he can do. But we've already won this war. So um, that's one of the main keys is we're going to get out of this if we play the game right. Now, let's go into some more science. Um, I told you about the Quran. Let's go into what's happening today and why the European has made it to the point where he said he's got to take us off the planet. Number one, he has what you call the King Alpha Plan. King Alpha Plan was revised in the 19, early 1970s where they said that they were going to um, put black people in concentration camps in a case of a, some, such and such event, which is now taken out by FEMA, which is your Federal Emergency Management Act. And you have GEMA which is the Georgia uh, Emergency Management Act and all this that thing too. Anyway, they have this, when they, they come out and they give you all these blankets and all this stuff um, at the time of um, hurricanes and stuff, because that's an emergency. 
Well, when they want to get rid of the black people, that's considered a federal emergency also, so it's the same department, you see. Now, they have, this King Alpha plan, they have already started enacting it. They said that they were going to um, um, put you in concentration camps. Well, in 1979, uh, Jimmy Carter renovated the old concentration camps that they put the Japanese in, in World War II. Then in 1989, remember, George Bush closed down five army bases. Said they're going to use it, and then he came on and said, we now got space for dope dealers. Then recently, your same boy that most of some of y'all voted for, Bill Clinton, closed down some other army bases, including the army base, the naval base in Charleston, which put 55,000 people out of work because Charleston, they got to do it in Charleston because it's a, a strategic point from the simple fact that Charleston has more, it's water, plus South Carolina has more blacks than any, any state in the, in the country, other than New York with a million something blacks in a, in a city. But we're talking about, you got whole counties in, in South Carolina and, 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 and whole towns that you don't even have, but mostly black people. You know, even though the white man running it, we think that the white man world is all around us, there are more black people, you know, because you had a slave port there that was real key. So now they closed down other army bases, and in St. Petersburg, Florida, they've already opened one up in the disguise of prison. Up the street here, you got one that's going up, a big prison. Look better than anything in Stone Mountain, but it's a doggone prison, you see. Now, why is it that you got to have that much prison space to lock that many people up, you see, and not doing anything about the crime? Supposedly, supposedly the United States, the one that's supposed to can get on top of everything and handling everybody else's business, but they build the jail spaces for everybody else. Well, the point is, it's the King Alpha plan. Now, number one, if you notice, all of the dome stadiums, all of the stadiums in most black cities, in the newer black cities, like um, in New Orleans, you have the Superdome, and also over here, are built in the black community. They could have built that thing in Stone Mountain. They could have built it in Buckhead. They could have built it anywhere because they got land. They got whole golf courses up there you can take it. You understand? But they built it right up there in Vine City. And it sits right on a black community. It used to be a black community called Thunder or something. They called it Thunder because it was a bad community and all, you know. But it sits right in the middle of that. The reason why that is is because they can have that as the first transport centers is to put you in the domes or put you in those stadiums as concentration camps before they hard you off to the real concentration camp. I don't know if anybody ever been on an army base, but an army base is bigger than sometimes. And you can stack 40 million people on 10 army bases easily. Like, like sardines, you already saw what happened in the, uh, you already saw what happened in, in, in Germany with that family fight going on between the European Jews, it's not the real Jews. Another whole story is going on in Somalia. Remind me, we'll get to that tonight. But, uh, you have these concentration camps that can stack bodies on, on, on stack on bodies on top of bodies easy. Now what I deal with, I deal with a lot of psychics. I deal with black people that you call born with a veil in um, the black community. So you don't want that, because that psychic word kind of mess black people up. So I don't want that some old people. So we say born with a veil. You say, oh, okay then. That's the, what we know it is. A sister named um, Tracy, I, I used to ask her questions because she wasn't up on all this Afrocentric knowledge. So the simple fact, I used to ask her these questions. So she would give me honest answers. Then I would tell her what it was. I said, when would the King Alpha plan be in it? And after? She said, mm, she, she used to um, get it. Her hand used to write it out. She said, uh, 1995. 1995. I said, oh, that's, that's about right. Then I said, you know, and so she would give me that. Now, I had another sister that went to Clark with me. She started having visions because she's part of the cycle, but she didn't know what was going on. She thought she was going crazy. She used to see black people that she knew stacked up on, these, on, on top of each other. Right in there, you said, she said, some of these brothers go to right in, in, in there, you said, she said, I used to see them, and she thought, I don't know what's going on, but I keep seeing this, this number, 1996. And I said, well, well, actually, what you're seeing is, is the actual King Alpha plan being, uh, being enacted, and all right. So we got the psychic version of what's really getting ready to go on, uh, 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 of what's getting ready to go on. Why is this? Well, number one, we're into what you call segments cycle. Or the, or, or the college cycle, or are your cycle. These are the goddesses. The, the first god is goddess segment, which is, um, give me this book of segment right here. The goddess segment, which is this African goddess, is the god of destruction, is the goddess segment. We're in her cycle. Her cycle is called, in India, it's called Kali, and it's called the black cycle. Now, when her cycle comes up, you have hurricanes, storm, earthquakes. Floods. Check. Start around 19, 
89, we had Hugo. You know, in 90, we had this and all. Now, every time we know something, every time it rains, it rains every place but together, someplace we are not. Right? All out here in, in place of white people get hell and some black people who live in our near them. But everywhere it rains, where heavily populated black people, we are not. That's the cycle that's on. In the Indian prophecy, we have a 120 year cycle of earthquake cycles where you get ready to have these major earthquakes. In places don't they, they never had them before, like Boston, Memphis, South Carolina, Ohio, Louisiana. These places will get ready to have major earthquakes. And you know California was. That's already going in the ocean. Like I was saying before we before I started the election, they got a new map out of the United States of California ain't even on it. That's gone. What about that? Well, see, you know, Atlanta, Georgia is a spiritual point. It's called a New Atlantis. That's the reason why they're building all your buildings downtown with pyramids, obelisks, and temples. That's called Syrian architecture. That's why you got the CDC here. That's why you got Emory getting ready to get a new Egyptology program. That's why you got all the Olympics and all of this stuff. You see, Atlanta, they're, they're, they're building the actual buildings to pull in certain energy for protection. That's why you got the Step Pyramid of Saqqara downtown at that Peach Tree One building. You got the IBM building with, with, with pyramids on it. You got the, uh, the Nation Bank building with a pyramid and a dog on gold obelisk. Yep. All stand next to each other look like the pyramids of Giza. That's right. Right. Three pyramids, and then you have the Temple of Demira down. It's a, it's a, it's a mahogany type stone. Um, Nation Bank. No, no, this is near, near the Greens Liquor Store down there, off of, off of um, um, one of those streets. It's a brown building. It looks like the Temple of Demira, the building I showed you. So what it is, this is a, supposedly a, the New Atlantis. That's why it's called Atlanta. It was prophesied as the New Atlantis. And on that map, they have a big picture of a spiritual site, and they got something on it that says Egypt. So, uh, Kemet, on, on the part where Atlanta is. So now the segment cycle is again, and um, what's happening is this. Um, you have, also it's bringing in this particular quickness. And also the new Atlantis is emerging. What's up, brother? Oh. Yeah. So now what's happening? It says that Sirius, that their cults know, is known as a star of judgment. It is the solar logos and it is the it, it is the star of retribution. Where you're gonna get the particular retribution. And it's known as a star of judgment. In Gerald Massey's book, Historical Jesus, Mythical Christ, page seven, I think it is, it says the day of doom was the end of time, here it is possible to identify the bridge whom the starry image, the soul, was probably Sothis, which is serious. They're talking about a bridge, and they're talking about a particular star of judgment which we've already connected with God. You understand? Now, connected with God. Now let's get into some esoteric stuff. Number one, we have the Dogon tribe in Kim, right? Um... And the Dogon tribe has the myth have the mythology that um they have the god Nomo, which is also in the sign of a fish, which is Pisces, which is Jesus Christ, because there's 16 crucified saviors around the world, 17 with Nomo, and you talk about the same dog on story. You see. You just know one and saying it's the end all and be all. Well, if that works for you, fine, because you still know one story, which is one of the right stories. It's just many stories of the same story. You have the God Nomo. And he has an uh, uh which is uh which is represented as a fish. Which is represented as a fish. He has an evil brother called Ogut, which is a mutant because he tore out his mother's side and was not formed all the way. You understand? He's known as the pale fox. And it's the same Jesus story. Uh, he, um, o, Ogu's placenta was earth. And, and an armor, which was the god armor, was going to destroy Ogu in the earth. But she said, I'll send the other brother to sacrifice. You know, Jesus died to say, sacrifice the sin. Same story. He sacrificed. He sacrificed. And um, one day, he's going to come back. And he's going to subdue his evil brother, Oku. But he's coming back in a 3,000 year representation of a spaceship that they show in it. And these are the people from Africa. He's coming back from Sirius to subdue the evil brother, Oku. Which is the pale fox. You see the science? Because remember now, in Africa, they put the science in mythology. So a kid can learn it. You see what I'm saying? Whereas that's why we got problems with things now, because we can't learn things because it's not catered to our type of learning. So actually,
Bible, mythology is science. So now, um, what you have is the particular Oku, his persistence, he's going to get subdued, which is the doggone pale fox. Now, um, moving right along, before I get into some other stuff, uh, I showed you the tree of life. In the tree of life, supposedly, now I want you to think for a minute, because we get ready to get into who you are. Now, Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the black man was the most superior out of the universe. I say, now, doggone, now, you talk about some black psychology. You big-ass universe up here. You talk about us now, the most superior, but we got a devil holding us down. I say, now, wait a minute, now, you talk about some black psychology. I mean, it's good to lift the black man up. I'm saying, but you're doing a hell of a job here. Well, come to find out that, number one, well, let's trace this. All of your gods, your black gods, in the ancient world were black. Blue black gods. That's evident. White man bear witness to that. Um, they had one point in origin that came from Sirius. Now let's check this. Number one, I said that Sirius is the center point for 11 other solar systems or a whole universe. It is the true father of the universe. It's the sun behind our sun. It is the sun that gives our sun light. Our sun is nothing. The light from our sun is nothing but a reflection of a greater sun. You see, and that greater sun being serious. One thing about that is, now hold me to the point on the, on, on, on the black man being superior. I'm going to explain this. One thing about that is, it's funny because I asked my mother back in 69 when the white man supposedly went to the moon. I said, well, I don't see nothing but darkness out there. I said, see to me it would be light in space. Because the sun out there, she said, that's true, it, sh it should be. But when you go into space, they say, not only can you can't see the stars, you can't even see your hand. And the only thing you can see is bigger stars like Sirius. You go well, where's the sun? Say, you can't even see the sun. Because the sun is black. You can't even see it. But what happens is, is we have an electromagnetic force field, which we know as the atmosphere. And what we're seeing is when that black sun hits our electromagnetic force field, we see the light of that sun based on our electromagnetic force field. But outside in space, it's black. But that sun is being powered. The light of that sun is actually a reflection of a greater sun. And that greater sun being Sirius. So Sirius is the center point for the universe and is the true father of the universe which has a mother. Because remember, go into science again. The mother is the triple blackness of space. So black till it has a reflection because light comes out of darkness. Out of the darkness comes the light. So the light so black till it reflects a light, the brightest light in space and the brightest of the seven stars, which the eight being serious, and all being serious, which is the first star, which is the first in heaven or the first in glory. So now, that its mother is new, the primordial womb of the universe, the cosmic egg, the black substance that is an actual substance more than it is just clear space. We're going to get into that in a few minutes. So, it is the center point for the entire universe. That means that it is the heaven of the universe. The Dogon said that when they died, they went to Sirius because that was heaven. Show you another little thing right quick. Uh, to go on to show you uh, uh, on, the, on the Egyptian walls of, um, I think it's on... Um, the Egyptian walls. Now show this. I wish I could have uh, transposed, but I'll try to just work it out. You can just see it and all. I wish I would have brought some 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 um, some things of this. Right here, you have the so you have the birth chamber. This is uh, on when you die. This is what they show on the on the temple wall. You have the birth chamber, and it has the great mother um, um, forming you. Right up here, you have the light. This is when you're on earth because it has the cartouche that bears your name or the chenu that bears your name. So this is where you like. It's the same thing on the tombstone when you have the, 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 the date, the slash, and the expiration date on the tombstone. You see, it's the same thing. So this is birth, or the womb, where you're being formed. Right in here is the, everything you did in life. Like that film when you get ready to die, you drown it and your whole life flashed before you. So everything you did in life was on here. And right up here is the heaven part. And you got the heaven part, and you got all of these stars, but right up in here, you got one place that's cleared out, and it has Sirius up, and it has the goddess Isis right here. So it's actually showing you where we actually go. Check. Did the Quran say that this is the god of Sirius that created both male and female from one singly ejaculated semen? Now, if this is the heaven, the heaven we 
conclusion that we have already so vigorously pointed out throughout the lecture. And we do have other life forms in the universe because the white boy bears witness to that because he's getting abducted daily by all kinds of things coming to uh, uh, experiment on him. They can't experiment on us because we're the gods of the universe. They know who we are and they don't play around with us. But they experiment on them because they are a mutant with no celestial origin that comes from our floor. And before I go any further, I want to, I got to get into that because I want to document this. Now, what you get ready to say, brothers? I was just going to ask, um, um, why are, I forgot, I ask you to get you, you, you think of it. You do it. The document that, now remember I told you on the Temple of Seti One, there's a group of four races of men in the Temple of Seti One in, in, in Kenya. This brother, brother Gerald Massey, one of the greatest geniuses of all time, white boys, and you know a dog on white. Now look at the man, white man pathology. He get a genius, he lets you know about it. You don't know everybody, but here's a man that is greater than all of his geniuses. They don't even touch him. They don't even put him in their books. Only a few white people, right? A lot of the black scholars are doing it. They don't even put him in the books. Because one thing about him, he was born uh, a son of a poor sharecropper and he hated his race. I believe, and I also believe, that the gods can come down. We found this out, that the gods can come down in the form of white people, but all white people ain't white. We had six black presidents. All white people ain't white. They just look white. So the gods can come down and who the hell they want to come down. Anyway, they had all this stuff coming out of Egypt back in the 1800s and had all these Egyptologists going in after they learned hieroglyphics after Champollion in 1834 translates it. They go in and start sipping through all this stuff and writing the history. But they are racist crackers, so they give all kind of racist stuff. Here's a man that went in and recorded what he saw. And on the temple walls of the Temple of Seti One, it says there's four races of men. I'll show you how they look. There's four races of men, right? And you have the, the, uh, the, the blue black African, which is called the Nezi. You have the, the kind of brownish African, which is still dark. Brownish to black is called the Ruti, which is the Egyptian. The blue black African is your West African. The brownish is your Egyptian or your Kemite. Then you have the Semitic, which is not the same Semitic as you think as an Arab today, which was actually, the Semitic would be um, Yoko, or lighter than you, but, but, but a black person. Just a light-skinned black person, which means Semitic, semi, semi-white, or semi-other race, semi-black, which, which is just meaning it's a mulatto, you understand? Which was still a black person, because it's got this stuff on the inside that makes you black. The stuff that we're going to get to that's going to save you from getting killed in the hills of North America. Then you have the Tamahu. So I'm going to explain these people. When they get to the Tamahu, which means a white person, it says Tama means created. And who means white, light, bright, and ivory, meaning the created white people. Then at the bottom of the temple, it goes on to say that the Nazi, or the Nazi, which is the blue black African, and the Ruti, which is the brown African, which is the, uh, which is the Egyptian, created the Tamahu. Now this is the... On the last moment, we laughed at for 60 years. Okay. In the temples. Hmm? You got to keep point that all the rest of them have human heads. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the whole set type thing. But the whole key to this whole thing is we laughed at the man was saying this. Now, in science, you have the, the theory, which acts as the basis of until you find some archaeological proof. And then you have the archaeological, anthropological evidence, which is the proof. Well, on the temple of said one, where did the basis of all our knowledge come from? Because we know of the day that the white man needs to teach us. It comes from where? It comes from Kemet. So in the meeting, the dog on the Egyptian priest would know what the hell they created. Yet this is on the temple walls, right? So this is the archaeological evidence that we said right here in black and white. This is why they had to shut the man out. Saying that this man was a biological mute. He's known as, in, now you have a, a in, 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 in Kemet you have the Nellis, which is the God who's also talking about science, alchemy or chemistry or science. You have Isis, Osiris, Osiris I, I give you the Greek name, Isis, Os, Isis Osiris, Neptunes, and Horus. Then you have the God Set. Now remember now it was Soot, which meant black at first, now he's Set. Soot was a blue black God, now he's Set, and he's known as a mutant because he's the only God of all of those four which means one human family, what those four mean. But the only God that out of all of those four is never seen with a human head because he's a mutant. You see. Showing you in science that this person is not real. Well, we can bear witness to that. And it goes a little further than that in, in the scientific part we're going to get into. He's a mutant. He's, he's a mutant 
which is a half-formed human being. In the, in the Dogon, when they talk about Ogu, Ogu tore out his mother's side and also set type in Egypt tore out the mother's side and leaped forth into the universe, which is giving you the astronomical, or giving you the actual scientific part of a mutant, which is, is not the original thing. And we can see that um, if, if he was the original thing, not only is he against all the black people or all the indigenous people around the world, but he's against nature itself. He's killed all the animals and he killed a dog on earth. You see? Diabolical, dialectical, diabolical mutant that's the beast. And that's, that's just the way it is. Well, sue me. But don't get mad at me. Get mad at the Egyptians. You understand? Know I'm, I'm a racist. Yeah, you're a respect. Hey, hell, get mad at the Egyptians who give you the personification of all religions. Whereas well, even in your Bible, they talk about the doggone people with leprosy. It's talking about, in actuality, it's talking about those particular, that, that particular uh, uh, mutated people. Now, getting back to this gods of the universe. If Sirius is the center point for all of the universe, around Sirius there are seven planets. Now, this is the point, because I, I have to explain this, because I've got to listen real close and try to get this. If you've got other stars, which means other suns, and they have planets around them, right? And they have people on those planets. Then you got this greater star, which is the greatest star, which is the mother or the father of all those stars. And it had planets around him. Then it means that those people that's on those planets would be the gods of the universe because their particular sun is the sun of suns. You understand how that goes? Now, we showed you the astronomical count, but we showed you the mythological part of how Isis and all of those who were actually real people who ascended to Godhood came from in which this planet was seated, but we got detailed information of a brother right from Chicago, Illinois, that, was, that met two brothers, two black men, looked like they were from Africa, met them, reading his mind, they didn't talk to them like this and all, they talked through telepathy, a clairvoyance, and if you notice on the Egyptian on the temples, you don't never see them with their mouth open. Go back and look at the Egyptian stuff. You always see them like this. They're showing you a clairvoyance or a te telepathy state. They talk to them like that, which is advanced, an advanced way of communication. Two black men. And he understood all they were saying. They never opened up their mouth. He met him in Chicago with a white UFO person by the name of George Adamski, who is dead now. He met him with them at a party. He said, I got to come back to this party, but I got two people I want you to see. And he met these people, and it was two black men from Syria. You see, showing you an origin and a link, and he met them in the 20th century. But don't, you don't have to believe it. it, is, it you know what I'm saying? Because it don't, it, it's, it's, it's not up for debate, or it's not up for you to believe. You know, the simple fact that we got a monkey on our back, we need to shake that. But then I'm going like, to say that the black man was God, and also, too, uh, to get the book Spiritual Hierarchies by Rudolf Stein. Show you this. Uh, well, I don't mess around and lost the page. Let me I'll just say uh, they, When the Greeks was in the in, in Kemet, an Egyptian sage told the Greek Solomon, he said, yeah, the, the people that we actually worship were once men and women like us. He said, well, what we used to do is we used to take the person and take the, uh, the actual uh, uh, initiative, put him in the mystery school for 40 something years, and about 30 something years, he thought he was believing in a spook god. Then we would come to him and tell him, guess what them gods that you admire so much? There were people who used to live on earth like you had transcended to the spiritual hierarchy. And then he would have to get used to knowing and accept the fact that knowing that in actuality, the gods that he used to worship were people just like him who had transcended to the level of godhood. And he could do that himself. But by him not knowing, he would have a greater respect uh, um, to for what he was by not knowing for the first 30-something years that he was an uh, actual God and stuff. Because he, since he gave the, all the pleasure and the, the adorations to those gods, he can give the same adorations to him and he can use his divine powers in a righteous manner. You see. Now, let's go on and get down to some, some other stuff. Number one, uh, there's a guy by the name of George Hunt Williamson wrote a book called Other Tongues, Other Flesh, who was abducted by some people from Syria. <laughs> wrote this book in 1940-something. Um, and, um, 19, yeah, no, 1954. 
See, all of you UFO literature you got to get now is all kind of confused stuff because it's new stuff and they're trying to make money. But if you get some earlier stuff from the early 50s when they were telling the truth, because they had to because of the simple fact nobody wasn't believing them, so they had to be as straight up as they can. Now, the earlier literature, but this book was reprinted back here. It was reprinted now, I think, last year. You can get it. Other Tongues, Other Flesh by George Hunt Williamson. And it says right here, he's saying, he says, um, the people of Earth are afraid. If suddenly a, a people from other worlds made, made themselves known, there will be an awful retribution for the horrible crimes against humanity and creator's laws would not go unpunished. And roughly our children are reluctant to give up their dangerous toys and their destructive ways. Now they are brothers and sisters from space. Our brothers and sisters from space. The white man talking. From space are here and they are not... And, and here and now they're saying that the government, I'll paraphrase, are going to hide in the closet until they go away. But he's saying, because if you've been running things all this thing all this time, you don't want to be taught like kids in school. Anyway, he, he wrote this book, Other Tongues, Other Flesh. Now I was up in the metaphysical bookstore, a white woman came up and said, Well, you know, there's another stuff. And she gave me some, some stuff called the transcript of the hierarchy. That they gave him the transcript of the hierarchy. These brothers from Sirius gave this white man to put in some books for later on. She gave me a copy of this transcript of the hierarchy, a few pages, and I ain't gonna tell you no lie. It was verbatim to the same stuff that's in the message to the black man. On how the white man gonna get his behind whipped. You see. So, um, let you know that this stuff is um, going on now. Let's go back into some time dates so we can go on to some, some other stuff that's getting ready to go on. Number one, the Dogon, when the Dogon was found or uh, was explored by the European Griot and Dentalin in 1930, or uh, 1937 is when they, when, they, when they explored them or checked them out. They was doing this dance and they thought it was a funeral ceremony. But this particular dance was called the Siki Ceremony. And it's the birthday of the god Nomo, which came from Egypt, it's called the Hinti Ceremony. It's done every 60 years in the Dogon, which is in the West Africa, which is in Mali. It's done every 60 years to make sure that the other people who saw it before, most of them would have been died off, and it would be a new batch. But anyway, they do this dance, and when they live their lives every day according to this religion. Perfect. And they know things about the that about the universe and the stratosphere is unbelievable. The white men say, I don't know how they know it. But they don't understand that these people are the descendants of the ancient Egyptians. Now, they do this dance called a city ceremony, which is, which is, which is, was in Egypt it was called the Hinti. It's called the birthday of a Nomo in, in Dogonic ceremony. In, Os, uh, in Egyptian ceremony, it's called the birthday of Osiris. Osiris being the great judgment and being the blue black god. Now, I know it's Get the little thing, but you gotta stick with me because I got to give you this stuff that's, that's the cure all. You understand how we gonna get out of this mess? Because I always give solutions. So now you got the Hinti, which is the, the, the Osiris, and you have the Sigi, or the Sugi, which is the, the Dogon ceremony, done every 60 years. The last time it was done, it was done in 1937. 60 years from 37 is what? 1997. You see, with our calendar being off, that's somewhere around the year 2000, you see. They're going to do this again, and when they do this, the birthday of Osiris or Nomo, it's, it's called the end of it all. This is when all the stuff kick in. On the seven, because the seven is the spiritual numbers of the man, and all this stuff kicks in, and all right. Now, they, they, so they're going on with that. So now, let's get to some, 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 some other stuff. Now, I told you about the the stuff that was in the air, and I don't think I brought my book. I didn't bring that magazine. That's why I didn't bring it. It wasn't in a book. Anyway, in the Smithsonian Magazine, June of this year, they talk about this stuff that the scientists noticed in the universe. They say the science, up until a few years ago, they didn't know what it was. They say you can't see it, you can't smell it, and you can't hear it, but it's all around you. And they got this picture of this white man here, exaggerated picture of him sitting in the living room, and this stuff going all through him. These blessed, this black stuff. Anyway, they say that this black stuff is the stuff that holds the planets together. It's the stuff that holds the planets together. And it's called the black substance. Now, keep the black substance. Now, what it means is, let's go right along. 
The black substance of this dark matter is a particular substance. They said, even though we can't see it or smell it or hear it, it can determine the fate of our universe because it is the stuff that we thought those stars that was out there was out there in space. They are out there in some stuff called the black substance. Going back to your cabal, remember I showed you the picture of Keller. Keller meaning serious and it means light. Right? It means light. But I said, it has a mother. And that mother is the triple blackness of space. Understand? The triple blackness of space. The triple blackness of space is this particular dark substance. Now, to get to the keys of, of um, what's going on um, as far as... Um, um, what's going on at this particular point? I want to read you something to show you why the beast got to take you out. He's got to take you out fast. Number one, he's giving you the immunization because he's trying to shut down this black substance called melanin. The same black substance that is in space and embodies black holes that is the dark matter is in the black man and woman's physical makeup. You see what I'm saying? But it gets a little worse than that for him. And let me go into this science right quick. I'm going to show you something. It's in a book called Murray Hope Ancient Egyptian Magic. Which is kind of crazy, but she's a fair sister. White woman, excuse me. And all, because number one, she's from England. And, you know, they don't have a lot of blacks over there. So, therefore, they can write a lot of, a lot of some of the best stuff comes from England or Europe. Now. It says, matters not somehow that the magical system filtered down through the ages. Many reliable psychics, mystics, and psychics and mystics firmly subscribe of the idea of a, now listen, a special gene, personalized time capsule, programmed with the knowledge of the old ones. Check. Now listen. The knowledge of the old ones who came from the Syrian star system, which are black people, look centuries ago. This gene is passed down through generations and generations to the present day. This Syrian genetic stream of a new school of magic. Now, what it is is this. What is a time capsule? What is wrong with black people? We know that we say black people don't stick together. We in all this different stuff, but we can't come together with a damn. Right? Because somehow we have lost our minds in the wilderness of North America. And we have been put into it all kind of divisions. But what we're talking about with this time capsule is cosmic memory of the older ones when the people first got on the planet when we were what? All gods. You see what I'm saying? This particular time capsule. Now, um... Go into some more stuff. Y'all bear with me because this is the this is the very in, this is the most important part of the lecture. Y'all bear with me. It says the idea of a race of lioness. Remember, I talk about the goddess segment. The goddess segment has a lion head. When I showed the goddess segment, she has a lion head and a female body, and we are in her cycle. This is the goddess segment. Not only is the cycle a segment in in the universe and on earth but it's also in in us now what does this mean it's known in the Hebrew religion as the Lion of Judah which comes from the Egyptian religion as the goddess segment is where it comes from because we know one came out of the other and it's known as the great who the black man buried in a shallow grave in Egypt called Sphinx of the Sphinx which Sphinx is an Egyptian, is, an, is a Greek word for a female gentry. So we're still talking about the black woman buried in a shallow grave. You see what I'm saying? Because the actual spiritual stuff is a feminine principle on what this stuff is. It's called the great beast of Babylon, and it's called the scarlet woman, which you know of in the Bible, which number is red. We'll get into the science of that. Listen, the idea of a race of lioness existed in the Syrian complex in other time frames are deeper implications. This 
with this gene we inherit from our Syrian forebearers who are responsible for the growth and the development of this solar system. You see, it says it manifests via personal truth of racial genetic codes. But for those who carry the Syrian gene, the cat lion crystal gene is the strongest. Well, we know we're the strongest people on earth. We endure with slavery and every other kind of harsh thing up to this point, and they can't kill us. You understand? It's the same thing with that hair, which got which got a great deal of melanin. I don't give a damn how much dog on sperm you put in it. A couple of months later, booyah! Back crack again. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about now. So, it says that Robert Masters, who, is the, who wrote a book for God is Second, said that Ramesses was born out of the lion's segment. What does he mean? It says, being born out of the lion's segment means that, the, that there's others among us that carry the Syrian gene, born out of segment. Now, they give you all this terminology, and they speak around this terminology not to say melody. You see? Not to say melody. Now, let's go on. It says that Sirius is called a blazing star in masonry. They have it on all the Masonic doors, the white Masons, not the black Masons, because the black Masons don't know nothing. We can bear witness to that. Who want to challenge me on that? You got the boys and you got the donkey's ritual, but you don't know none of the science. All you do is you learn the rituals and you learn the password and you learn all this. And then it's a social club. You drink liquor and drive cabs. That's, <laughs> That's all they do. And say, I got a life. This old lot of mine, come on with it. And you take a couple of days to be a master mason and a couple of weeks to be a master mason it depends on when the brother can catch up with you when you get all them off their jobs you go for two weeks or something and be a, a doggone 30, 30 degree where it take the white man years because even though the white man don't have all of the true knowledge what he does have is, is, is the closest thing to the ancient Egyptian mystery system and he was not stupid enough to get it to Prince Hall as a matter of fact half degrees are substitute degrees in Prince Hall mason I know my brother's a mason, and he can bear witness to it. He's a 33rd degree. Am I lying? 33rd degree. I've been in the masonry, and I know what the hell I'm talking about. And, I, and see, so the brother say, oh, that's some deep stuff that is front you. They don't know shit. You this person. They don't know nothing. Nothing. You see. But you have the blazing star, and that same blazing star is serious. That same blazing star is in you, which is the Syrian gene, which is melanin. You see, which is melanin. Now, Going on a little more, let's, 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 let's break it to some science. Um, white people bear witness in their literature. They bear witness in their literature. It says that these people say that they're from Lila. White people trying to say they came from Lila. They didn't come from Lila, they came from our lower half. Ain't no way in the devil you're going to come from an astronomical origin and act like a doggone beast down here and don't have no inkling. And 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 and, for, and the only stuff that you got to go get, you got to go pick up some stuff to learn some stuff. Spiritually, you got to go get it from the black man. Going into all the ancient indigenous people and learning their stuff to try to raise themselves up higher. If they had an astronomical origin, they wouldn't need that. How in the devil you going to come from space and end up in a doggone cave? <laughs> that means right mathematics to me. You know what I'm saying? In barbarism, eating dookie and... And excuse the expression, and, and, and where the woman, where the man had to, where the, where the woman inherited, where the son inherited the mother as a, as, as, as a sex mate. They used to pass down the mother after the father. The son would inherit the mother after a certain age. The son would get the mother, and that would be his sex mate. And, would, and, 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 and the dog, and all kind of stuff. And where they used to take the women and put them all in a ring and on one day, and all of them used to just go out and just, and just make love to all the women in the camp. You see what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah, and then also too, they, they understood. This is where your xenophobic attitude. They used to they used to eat a lot of bloody meat, and they understood the blood because they love blood because all their animals was raw. So they you used to see the woman bleeding at a certain point of the month, and they said, "Damn, that's great." So they would actually cut themselves so they could bleed like that. When they found out that didn't work, they started having a baby. So they cut themselves trying to have a baby. When they found out that didn't work, they said, "Damn, she's powerful, and I must control her." And this is where you get the xenophobic attitude and the sexism that, that, that plagues us today. You know, whereas we know now that the woman is, quote unquote, and most black people 
know this because you know your mama's superior. You know damn well that the woman is more superior than the man. Now, if we're going to get out of this mess, you can't take on the same thought that the white beast think takes on with the sexist attitude against his woman. You know doggone well it ain't no question whether you're superior or not to your mama. In Egypt, ISIS is known, or Sirius is known as the great provider. Because it would rise the Nile every year and fertilize and rise the, the, Nile, the star would rise and the Nile would overflow and irrigate Egypt and they would plant from it. And they call it the great provider and they named it after the woman because they understood that the woman is the great provider. It makes sense. Let's look at this right quick. Let's look at this right quick. We used to run a matriarchal, a matriarchal society. Why? Because it was the perfect society. Your mama run the house. You run your home like you run your neighborhood. You run your neighborhood like you run your town, and you run your town like you run your state, and you run your state like you run your country. So if the woman is at the head of the home, then you run your neighborhood, your town, your state, and your country the same way, because when mama running things, she provides for everything. She gonna make sure you got everything. So it was beautiful, and it made more sense. You see what I'm saying? And it wasn't a selfish thing with the capitalism that's going on. You see, the woman is the microcosm of the macrocosm. Even in certain realms of spirituality, we can't even get to it. It take us months to get to it. I take case in point. I had a sister come over last night to meditate. She said, I'm, I'm going to get there. I've been meditating for months, and i got all this spiritual stuff going on. She said, I'm gonna. She said you got the temple of Aphid, which is a sanctum sanctorium of Aphid, where the, where the high priest used to go, and i got a big picture of them all. She said, I want to go in there. I said, well, you do what the hell you want to do. <laughs> Next thing I know, she up in there crying because she done went in the temple. She done actually went spiritually in there and they told her to go back. And she up in there crying. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> I've been out here about four, five months. And you come up in here, you done, you done meditate. You two days into meditation and you already gone. Because the woman, she's had, she got the melanin in the spiritual makeup for both. You see? And you know she's the first. And she got to be the most superior because most when the fetus is born, it's a female until it develops a penis. It develops a penis later on. And the penis is nothing but an elongated clitoris, which is actually a damn freak of nature. Yeah. Let's deal with it. You're going to deal with science, let's go deal with it. If it wasn't, that's why I told you that you can go right to India and they got women that can open their, their vagina and, and get a certain angle to the sun and have a child. That's why the first primordial counterpoint of godhood you see, you see the feminine principle. You see the first God in human archetype of nature, you see the woman. And you guess what? I know that the black man and black woman is God, and the black man, even though he get through our... It, see, the only reason why we're macho, because we think we've think we we been taught that way, and we think we're supposed to be that way. And we think our manhood is at stake. But once a brother know, you know who I get the most people who ask me the most about this stuff? Brothers come up and ask me the most about the woman stuff, more than women. But I want to hear about that great mother. So right there, that's telling you that the black man, on his right in doctrine, on his right thing, he's just a spiritual. Because we are all one, you see. But that's the point about this woman. So now, getting back to this, they're going to take this life city, they're going to But in their lives, they talk junk about serious. In their lives, they tell the truth. In the esoteric. Let's check it out. It says, now they say that they came to birth, they, they had plans for, oh, uh, we had plans for the earth, but the people from Sirius, which are black people, got here first. Then they said, well, what happened to those people from Sirius who interfered with the plans of the lives? By interfering, they came in genetically tied to the development of earth. Real key stuff is going on. They have always had many tricks up their sleeve, and they got the last laugh. Now listen, listen. They got the last laugh. When working with the Lyran groups, doing the earth genetic programming with no such thing as no line groups. They inserted a latent DNA code within human cells triggered with by accelerating vibration occurs when the civilization begins to develop spiritually. We're going into the fourth dimension now. As Earth accelerates self-awareness uh, self to the fourth dimensional density occurring presently, the, the code is activated once activated, the human race unwinds. Its limited vision like coil expands, and all that becomes that it becomes visible was uh, what, that, that, 
the way allowing humanity to eat from the tree of life. This is the tree of life. And they're saying that this, when this thing comes open, it becomes this one. Now let's go into some more science. Let's go into the, 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 the breakdown of the human body. I'll show you the difference between the white man. And the white man, your pineal gland secretes melanin. The European's pineal gland is calcified. Although you have spiritual, if a, this is some stuff that go on. If a white man is down to the long black mom, say some of them will be saved. All those you have some of these spiritual people, they can be raised up by a spiritual group of black people on series. They can raise some white people up to spiritual levels and all that. That's how you get some of them in all this stuff and all provide their heart is in it. And they want to go into some stuff. Now, they have a calcified pineal gland which means it doesn't work. And Richard King in his book, African Origins of Biological Psychiatry, who is the formal expert on melanin, tells you about this in this book, in one of the chapters um, in, in this book, African Origins of Biological Psychiatry, which means it's a big bone and it doesn't secrete the juice. Even though they can get the kundalini action, they can open up the chakras and they can do all this because they're doing all that. And they can open up the third eye and all this. Here. It ain't the juice, though. What we're talking about is different and what they're talking about. <clears throat> so now, at the base of the spine, um, I got a friend, a friend that went to, went to Clark with me by the name of Rodney Cohen, and he was in um, med school. And he said when we used to do the autopsy, I had a friend who used to do autopsy, I used to come up in there. He said, you know how we can tell if a, if a black person dies and we can't tell whether they're black or white? Or we want to see if some of these white people are black. Because all white people ain't white. You see. That's why they have them black babies on down the line on what the hell happened and stuff and on put them up for adoption. But <laughs> what happened? What, what happened is they say when we want to tell whether they're black, we split the base of the skull and the top of the spine. We split that open, and we split that open. There's some black stuff there, and we can tell whether that's melanin, and that's whether it's black or white. And that's called a substantial nigra, or the black substance, the black dot, the black dot. Now, in spiritual attainment, you have the chakras, the root chakra, the spleen chakra, the navel chakra, the heart chakra. These are spiritual centers when you have the seven seals. The throat chakra, the brow chakra, and the crown chakra. These are the spiritual things when they are activated by the kundalini, which is the goddess segment also, coming from the base of the spine and uniting to with, the, with the crown chakra, with the third eye, you have Christ consciousness, which is a feminine principle uniting. When this stuff unites, you are Christ consciousness, which, the, and, uh, which is Christ consciousness. But you have something also in you called the medulla oblongata, which is called the mouth of God. Well, why is it called the mouth of God? You've got all these other spiritual centers. Why is that called the mouth of God? It is called the mouth of God because they understand what is in that particular center or that particular gland. Is what the same primal stuff in which the God Almighty is made of, the universe, which the God Almighty is made of, is the black substance. So they call that the mountain of God, which is the black substance. And they say, and it's called the Akash. So they give you all these names. It's called the Akash, which you get the Akashic records from. Or the Acacia, or the Akash, which means the black substance. And the Akash, and the Akash, they say is the image of God in the medulla oblongata. God. Well, we know white people don't have it because remember the laws of correspondence? As within, as without. The mutant, the mutated white skin tells you an indication of what's on the inside. Now, it's funny about black people. You can have the lightest white person. Like I said before, you split that open, you got that stuff. So all people are black. So even with the color complex, the color complex we got, that light-skinned sister is blue-black. And it's capable of having a blue-black child. With two light-skinned people getting married, they can go, they can go like that. You see, down the genetic pool. You see, but that's called the mouth of God. Or it's called the Bindu seed, which is the special cosmic seed coming from Sirius. Now, the point of it is this. Now let me get into the things. What happens is, you have the Sphinx. And the Sphinx is known as the God who it sits in the middle of the desert 
in the middle of the world. It is put there to say that as a people that is sleeping. But in a certain cycle, in those particular cycles that the Dogon is working on, in a certain cycle, when Sirius comes back with, the, remember I said when Sirius, the heroes gambles, the holy, spiritual holy reunion, when Sirius unites with all the other planets and comes back, you have, it unites also with the sun. And the great who is talking about the sun is our, in, in our solar system, which is the center of our solar system, supposedly. And the great God who is the Sphinx is talking about, it's called Horus on the horizon. Who is Horus? Horus is a blue-black man. Ra is a blue-black man. Get the whole, the, and, uh, uh, and, and Osiris is called the God of the perfect black. The Sphinx is called Haramaket, which means Horus on the horizon. Which it means is when the sun gets to a certain point, this Bindu seed triggers. And when it triggers, the black man becomes to his original place, Godhood, and will be Horus on the horizon. You understand? You clear with, everybody clear what I'm talking about? So the Sphinx is an indication, which is the cat lion crystal, which the Sphinx is called the is called the, also the beast of Babylon, which is in the which is in the base of the spine, which rises up from the south, like Sirius rises from the south in Egypt and further and fertilizes the Nile. As above, so below. When certain astronomical figurations happen, we wake up. And we are in that time period now. You see. Now. I'm going to pass these out right here. Pass some of these out right here. I'm going to give the people some of that. Because this is some beautiful stuff here. I'm going to show you this thing right here. Pass some of them out. And we're we going to uh, wind down. We're going to go through some questions. Y'all all all right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Y'all got some extra. Yes, please make sure everybody gets some. Pass them on through. Now. Pass that on through. Now, we, give me one. Let me see. I gotta get one too. Give me one. Let me see if I got. I might have one. Hold on. Cause I'm gonna show something. I'm gonna show something. Number one. Let me read. Let me let me read something to you. Now, we understand that the book of the dead, or the book of coming forth by day, is the it is you got any the forerunner. You got no extra ones? Oh, you gave them all out. Okay, give me an extra one. Everybody got one? Yeah. Everybody got one? You need one? How many more you got? You got any more? Give that brother one. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just get mine out of the book. Now, now I, I just get mine out of the book. Look, to let you know what's going on, you have the Book of the Dead, the Book of Coming Forth by, by Day, which is the oldest religious literature recorded in history. Now, in this, we understand that your Bible and your Quran and all of this, this is the forerunner where the elements of that come into the making of the Bible. See, we're not, we're not attacking the Bible because it's a whole hour. We're just giving you, we're just putting clarity on it. See, the Christians shouldn't get upset for the simple fact because this is not an attack on his religion. This is actually enhancing his religion to be a better Christian because he's not a fool in the religion anymore. Because a person who's in a religion and don't understand the origin of it and the true meaning, the esoteric meaning, which esoteric means hidden, is a fool in the religion. You understand? Check. Now, and this is the the translation out of the Book of the Dead. Now this is about a, a guy, that's, the Book of the Dead is about a series of spells that's going on with a person named Ani who has died and trying to get to the other side, which is the crossing over from this region to crossing over point of the Tree of Life. Now, and this is a caption right here on, oh, did I pass that? Did, I, did you get some, did you, did, this is the translation, everybody. Translate, got translation on the bottom. You get those. Now, you didn't get one? You got them? A few more. Get those out. Who don't have one? Raise your hand. You got that one. Raise your hand. The translation and stuff like that. And all, you know, look. Pass that on back. And all, who don't have one? Get, get the rest of them out and stuff. But otherwise, we'll, we'll, we'll get some in the shop, some of these things, if you don't have it. Now, the translation says, now this is a person that's, that's standing, trying to go into, yeah, get a translation. Get, no, that's two of them. Get somebody else one. Who else don't have one? Brother right here. Give him one. Okay. Appreciate it. Right here is showing you that man is God and God is man. I got an arrow drawn down here on a number three. You see that? That arrow is kind of faded out. You can see it. This is a person. Now he's he's saying something. He says that I set up a ladder, 
among the sky to the gods. I am one of them. This is the key now. It's giving you two things. It's telling you who God is and where heaven is in this passage. It says, but I am one of them. I have spoken like a swoon goose, which, which means goose, until the gods hear my cry and repeat it to Sothis. Sothis meaning serious. You understand? Key passages to show you who God is and where did you come from where. Who else need one? But I just need one. Look. Okay, now. Let me get some other things. Look at this. Did I, did you, did you pass out these? I want you to look at this. It says on the bottom, it's got on there, it's got dolphins and extraterrestrial birth, birth, birth. Yeah. yeah. I would just say if I had some. Give me some more? No. Well, there's one. Get that, that brother right over there. Oh, here's one. Yeah. And who else need one? That brother need one, that brother need one. And he, he, you got one too. Give one to him. Give one to him. Uh, I think you didn't pass out none of them, man. Nobody got some of them. They don't, have them. don't worry about it. We'll, now, we'll, we'll get some. Hold on. And this is what it says. It says the year 1995. This is on the second paragraph, the second page. It says the year 1995. A fourth dimensional humans will design a new reality. This spiritual congress of star people, who are the star people? We're the star people because we got it right back here and all over the makeup. The star people will be acknowledged. The, 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 the design of a new human race comes from Sirius through lots of difficulties. So it's actually talking about, now remember now these time frames, they vary. It could be 95, but it can, it's, it's going to be within the next couple of years. Don't get it to now. Well, 1995, then you somebody can prove you wrong. What he's saying is the white boy don't never give you the real date because his time is limited, so time is important to him. But we got to understand, we estimate 97, 95, 96, 98. So that's one thing that, that I wanted to get into. Now, uh, let me get this out of that book. Where did I put my book, The White Boy? Um, anyway, now, we're dealing with this. We're dealing with the tree of life. You got this. And you have the other paper that I gave you, that breakdown. Right? You remember the breakdown I gave you? Oh, that was a little crossbars. Did you give out the melanin ones too? I gave out everything. You gave out everything. You'll see a, a diagram that has melanin on it. Look at your paper. Do you got a, a breakdown of melanin also? Did, you, did I give you some of those? I, don't think so. I didn't give you any of those? Oh, the one that, uh, it's a melanin thing, a melanin breakdown. You didn't, you didn't record it, you didn't give me any of those? Yeah. I didn't give you none. Here it is. Pass those out right quick. Give me one right quick so I can fix those up. Okay, then. The tree of life. Let's deal with this. This particular tree of life just represents the universe, the earth, and man. He's going to give you some. What's happening with this is this. The the primal substance of the breakdown of this tree of life, which means the end point. It means everything that this stuff is about is coming to one primordial point. Now, that primordial point in this tree of life, in this section that I give you the first one, not the melon, and the other one. Look at both of those. Now look. Look at the other one. It says, in the middle it has... um. It has A, it has R, it has B, it has H, it has D, it has B, it has R, A, and that means abracadabra, which is a magical word. But, right where you see in the middle, right here, you'll see one, two, three, four lines down. Microcosm, macrocosm, microcosm, right? You see that? On this end, look at the, this, this is the picture, I want you to be looking at this, on this side, right here. You got it? I want you to look at that. Very key that you look at this. Now, it says macrocosm on the second line, and on the third line it says microcosm, right? On the fourth line it says the great work. You got that? Now, let me get some books from England on here. Okay, let's see here. Great work, let's see. Now look at that. It's called a great work. Let's see what the great work is. Right, quick. Y'all with me? All right, we ain't gonna, we don't have long. Okay, the great work is a primary alchemical term. Alchemy is a science in chemi like chemistry. You have alchemy, which is talking about the breakdown of the universe. The alchemical term, it denotes a bringing of a substance 
are an energy to the fullest possible degree of perfection. Melody, you got that? The so-called transmissions base metal into gold, the typical example, the great work entitled A Union of the Five and the Six. The five and the six is, is number 11, one beyond 10, which is Kelda, which the five and the six, six is serious. Which is serious. The five and the six. Now, hold on. You get this right. The pentagram or the hexagram together, the 11th pole, pole star, which is serious, is called AA, is um, the 11th pole star. Gives you the conversation to the holy guardian angel, which is the actual hierarchy of Sirius, which is the celestial hierarchy. This great work that they're talking about, that I just showed you, look at it. It's, it's, it's this great work that he talks about as a substance. He shows you the substance which is in the Bindu seed, in the Medulla Oblongata. He shows you a breakdown of what this is coming from the tree of life. Look real close, and then look what the great work is, and look at the same breakdown. You see the melanin breakdown right there? It's the same breakdown. This is coming from the tree of life, which is showing you that the end substance of this breaks down to this in a numerical or alphabetical order. And the alphabetical order to, of this is the same as the stuff in you in melanin, which is the substance of God. Now, what does this mean? And we can end this and we can go into some questions and ask that you all can go home or whatever tech thing or what we can do. What does this mean? This means that this particular substance, you become God. In Egypt, you had all these different animals on the wall. When you put those animals together, it represents one God and God one. Those animals in, in you got people with animal heads, different kind of animals in nature. And you put them together, it's like a puzzle. It represents one God and God, God one. Now let's look what an animal does. Now look. Some animals can see in the dark. Some animals can fly. Some animals can transform. Some animals can, can go into cocoon. Some animals can live underground. Some animals can live underwater. Some animals can do all kinds of things, but the animals is, can only do one particular thing. But when man is personified to his greatest level, he can do each last one of those things, those gods, those metals put together. He can do the same powers that the animals can do. But he, unlike the animals, he can do them all when this thing is personified. This is the key behind this. You will have powers of Superman and powers of God. Take it or let it alone. But the point is, when this happened, Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we put them stars out there. Well, don't you know if, you're, if the same cosmic stuff that's in your head embodies the black holes, which the black holes is the core of the universe, and it embodies black holes, right? Then you can put your mind together, and you can make new planets, new stars, and you can get the piece off your back. He already knows when this stuff puts together and when this stuff opens up, he's a mere memory. He's dead. You can kill him just by thought power alone. Also, what exists in these things are the archetypes of the collective unconsciousness is what we call IFOs, identified flying objects, which is coming to tear this planet down. These UFOs that he is now bringing out He's bringing out little by little because he knows that you're going to have the existence of UFOs all automatically. So what he is doing is, he's putting it out in the news now, he's putting it out on a little bit of TV shows and a little bit of movies. So when you see it, it won't be big, a big shock and you won't, you won't freak out. And then he gives you knowledge.